Another exciting video, Tim here, Gamaviti, back in the Gamaviti garage. Today we're gonna spend a little time, got a good one for you. We're gonna talk about extrusions. Bolt those to your truck. I'm gonna show you the extrusions that we're starting to carry here and some tips that are gonna apply to whatever extrusion you decide to bolt up to your truck. So it be a lot of valuable information here. So should be fun, let's get started. So let's talk about the extrusion itself. What we're using now is a 40 millimeter profile extrusion. And I found one with a flat top on it. You know, just some style points there. Uh, water doesn't sit in the top, kind of a nice feature. Of course, if you needed that, you could always flip it 90 and you could get that track on the top. But I really don't like to use the tracks for accessories. I prefer to just strap things, clamp them as they're designed to. You might be asking why, why go different? Why not use what everyone else is using, right? Which is the... Uh, Kind of the one by two profile, right? You see these on pretty much every other extrusion rack out there. Well, yeah, first answer is because that's what everyone else is doing. Gotta be different here, but I really, I just can't get behind this little hardware. These little dinky little quarter 20 track nuts that, you know, they go in these little things, they slide in here and it's tough to get the right combination of washers to where it's tight, but it's not burying the bolt into the track. Ah, uh, that's been tough. I've got these double channel nuts that I've been using. They got two holes in them. So those work pretty good. I mean, for attaching our towers to these, you know, it gets the job done, but it's just difficult to do. So if I switch it to this bigger profile, now, now I can use real hardware. So this is a 5 16 18 carriage bolt. It slides right in there, square holds it in place, nice and secure in that track. And, uh, easy to handle, easy to find other things for. And so a lot easier to use on the hardware side, obviously gonna be a lot stronger too than that little quarter 20 stuff. So that's why the switch. So the next thing I wanna do is walk you through a three crossbar system and some tips on how to set that up. Now again, this applies to any crossbar out there, not just the ones you get from Gamma here. So let me walk you through a couple of the key points there. First thing to point out is Got everything bolted. These guys going into the roof are, you know, they're tight, but they're not final tight. I, I still have a couple more twists on them. That's where I want to leave those. These are loose here. These are loose. So this can, uh, essentially this could pivot if I needed it to, and that's by design. You can see it twist in there. Uh, same in the middle and same in the front. You can see how loose that is there. And in the front, Big difference here, I did not use that center adjusting bolt, but I did in the middle, and I have it on the very lowest setting. You can see it across the way there. And on the back, I put it on kind of the second from the bottom setting. So, good reason so for that. So we want the height of all three of these crossbars to be at that same plane, so that they're all working together to support whatever we put up there, probably a tent, right? Now when we set up racks, usually we'll just worry about the front towers, you know, and I'm going here because there's it's usually here, not here. We're gonna put the little bolts in that set only, knowing that it's just gonna fall back to as low as it's gonna go by the time it gets to the back. And then we tighten the towers and they rise up to the rack. Everybody meets at the same plane, everybody works together. Well, in the crossbar system, there's nothing tying these guys together. One of the disadvantages of doing crossbars. So we're gonna set that height with the middle towers. Then we're gonna put that back where we want it, essentially. And then we're gonna force that front one to come up to uh, to rise and, and hit that same plane. So I'll show you how to do that. So I've taken a standard from my high lift jack and I'm using that as a flat surface. This is something that you probably have so you can replicate that. You can also use a two by four, you have a piece of angle, just something that's nice and flat and that you can easily clamp to your rack. What that has done is on these back two towers, it has ensured that the top surface of these guys are, they're planar with each other, right? We've set the height on both. So for our intents here, these guys are right where they need to be. So I've clamped those with the high lift standard. So now I can go ahead and secure those bolts. What I've also done is I've measured how far I'm sticking out here on both sides, just to see that I'm, I'm close enough to where I'm not gonna be bothered by one being shifted the other way. But now that these are all nice and flat and secured together, I can go ahead and secure these bolts that go through the center and make them nice and snug. 
and I can secure, if I have it, these bolts down here. And as I do that, I can watch a little tiny gap between the top of the tower and the bottom of the crossbar. That's going to close together, and that's all by design. That's so that this top tower piece is under a little bit of spring tension, when everything is nice and tight. And uh, it also allows this one piece to work on a number of different racks in a number of different positions. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten basically all three of these. Once that's complete, I can give these guys their last crank, and then go ahead and snug that little quarter 20 bolt right in the middle. All right, so these guys are all buttoned up and snug. Before I go any further, I'm gonna leave these clamped up and go do the other side. Okay, so I've got two crossbars secured, ready to go. Now I can move on to that forward tower. So, pretty simple there. I'm just gonna take off this clamp from the back one. And I'm gonna move it up to the front one here. And in so doing, I'll basically be pulling this up to meet the standard of that high lift jack. So all three of these are going to be set to the same spot. So I'm going to do that on both sides. So kind of a wacky view here, but I want you to see this little gap between the tower and the crossbar. As I tighten, tighten this nut, you'll see that gap is closing. And uh, this is all good stuff. This is all by design. Same thing is true on our racks. That's why it's so important that we tighten this inside bolt first before anything else, just to get those tower set at the height that they need to be at so that they are working together with all the other towers in the system. So everybody's at their nice same plane. Okay, so I snugged up the front. This side is essentially done. Let me just, show, I took the clamps off, but let me just show you what I ended up with. That guy is touching in the back. Of course, it's, it has to touch in the front. And I've got maybe a, you know, between an eighth and a quarter inch gap in the front. I'm actually good with that. And you know why? Because I know that tent is gonna flex. It'll actually flex really well. Um, maybe not so great that it does flex, but I know it'll flex to meet this. So again, it depends on what you're setting up, how important that is to be completely planar. I think it's nice to be flat. Um, and of course, this is the tool and the method you can use to achieve that. So hopefully that was useful to you. I'm gonna go to the other side. Okay. So this side is done, and uh, I did a better job on this side. I've got essentially no gap anywhere. Kind of makes me want to go maybe the other side, but we're going to leave things alone. That's how you do it. Spend as much time on this as you feel is necessary. Get them as dialed in as you really want to get. Hopefully this is a nice tool that helps you do that. So hope that was helpful. Let's move on to something else. But before we do, two things I want to point out. One is, remember we only use the inside of two bolts so i am out of actually the right size bolts i had to cut these longer ones down to make this video i couldn't wait uh, in reality though you're going to get two per tower so if you're doing a three bar setup you're going to get 12 of these you got to get both of those in there before you can tighten one they both have to get in there and started and at least the nuts on there so wanted to point that out because that's going to be a difference but for video purposes it's a lot easier to just see one anyway um, second thing is I didn't have to use the high lift I could have used the tent uh, and achieved the same thing so the principle is still the same we're aiming for flat we're gonna set the height with the middle so that the middle isn't lower because we definitely don't want it to be dished down like this uh, but you could use actually your tent assuming that was the purpose of getting the crossbars in the first place so let me know your questions if you have any on that and uh, okay now we can really move on. All right, so the next question might be, I already got the rack, so why do I need the crossbars? Or how could I use the crossbars if I already have the rack? Or if I get the crossbars today, upgrade to the rack later, and I still use the crossbars. So let's get into that. There's a different hardware kit if you already have the rack. So when you are just mounting these to the towers, something like this, a carriage bolt, nut bolt, and a washer, lock washer nut. If you already have the rack, it's gonna be a longer bolt with a spacer washer, and a thumb screw. So it'll allow you to quickly add your crossbars to your rack. Let me show you what that looks like. And okay, now we've got a raised crossbar bolted to our Gamma VD rack. You can see that spacer washer goes between the plate of the rack and 
the bar and that's to provide clearance for this outer rim here. And then down below we have the thumb screw right there for uh, securing this guy. And this can now be useful for, so you needed to move a boat, it could be a little bit easier, if that, especially if you have a canoe with a big arc in it and you just wanted a couple crossbars to bear that load or lumber, a little bit easier to strap down maybe. Um, Tule box, Yakima box, those kinds of things where you wanted something easier to clamp or maybe the, the box had a contoured bottom to it and you needed to compensate for that. You couldn't go to a flat plane like the rack. So that's why you would want to use a pair of crossbars. Oh, but wait, there's more. You can also run these the other way. Being an extrusion, you can slide those mounts wherever you want them. So you could have a sideways rail, raised rail to help secure loads or strap down gear maybe on a special trip. Maybe you have some plastic panels up there and you want to go hang out up there on some chairs or maybe just roll a mat around and watch a sunset with the kids. So now you have a little bit of a guardrail. You know, probably not the best guardrail in the world, but certainly better than no guardrail for that purpose. Uh, anyway, just think about other ways you could use that long crossbar. I'll jump up and give you another look at it. Here it is from the back. So. You get an idea, there it is, just sitting on top of the rack there and, uh, you know, ready to do whatever it needs to do as far as a side rail is considered. So with all those uses, I haven't even got to the best one yet, and that's this monster, the thing that's been literally on top of me all day here. Um, and you can see that kit that we make with the uh, spacer watchers, the thumb screws, these guys sliding around. This is essentially a quick install kit now for my rooftop tent. So. I'll show you what that looks like. And there you go, that's what that looks like. So, be honest, it's, it's, it's difficult to get this on the first time. We all know that your, your nemesis of the world is, is reaching under there to tighten this guy, you know, one click at a time with the little ratchet. But the idea is you set these crossbars up on the rack first, lower the tent down onto it, and then you're clamping them for the last time. In the future, all you need to do then is loosen these thumb screws, which they're nylon nuts, so they're hard to do this first time. Difficult, you might need the channel lock, but over time they're gonna loosen up a little bit. They're still not gonna come loose on the trail, good thing, but they'll be a little bit easier to uh, loosen when you're back in the garage and you can go back to your lift system. So that's what that looks like. And I think with that, we'll call it rooftop tent solution, kind of a quick release deal. Once you get it all set up, quick taking it off, not so quick putting it on, but you'll figure that out. Rails on your rack, running lengthwise, crossbars on your rack, crosswise, and of course, crossbars directly to the towers, you skip the rack solution. So a lot of ways we can use those extrusions. Hope that was helpful to you. Let me know what else you wanna see and thanks again for being with me. I will see you on the next one.